you've asked for it repeatedly, which one is better? The HK MP5 or the BNT APC9 Pro? It's the battle of new school versus old school. And truthfully, I have dreaded making this video because they're both excellent. And every time I thought we could avoid making this video, the request kept on coming. So, let's discuss. It's mono a mono. Oh, mono e mono. It's the showdown. MP5 versus BNT. Uh, a lot of people have asked for this, and you know what? We're going to give it to you, everyone. So, we're just going to go straight criteria. We're going to try to keep this as objective as possible, which, of course, is impossible. But let's start, how about this? Um, history in service. Fair point. Uh, if we're doing a point system, you get a point. 100%. So this, 100%. this was in production 50 years before this? Right. So 51 to be exact? Right. Now, yeah. that's not a fault of the B&T. No. Nah. It's in, in nah. service. It's in service. But if we're going like, well, which one has the history and the track record? Well, let's be fair. What, what we're really talking about there is which one has stacked more bodies? It's not even comparable. It's not even comparable. In so. Hollywood. How about this? Not that Pop culture history. That's even another point towards you. So Pop culture history. Now, this is creeping up because I mean, it's, it's been a couple movies yeah, lately. Black Hawk or no, uh, White House Down. And Call of Duty. Yeah, for the nerds out there, right? So, okay, okay. Uh, uh, history and service. Right it's now, like, you got one point. Okay, yeah. Modularity and aftermarket support. So... My first initial thought would be like, well, for sure, like the MP5, but, but modularity, B and T. I run. This is obviously yours, standard B B and T lower, right? B and yep. T mags. Mine is a Glock lower, so Glock mags. They make a 320 lower, 320 mags. So three different iterations depending on your pistol, right? So the yep. and and and. This takes standard AR trigger. You can yeah. drop into these. Can't with that. So modularity. Okay, but put. Point on trigger. I'll concede that. Okay. The modularity thing is is look, I, I've got to go with B and T on the modularity thing because yeah. not only can you swap lowers, it's not even a different serial number. No. Right? Like no. it's it's just a part. You yeah. know, it's a chassis kind of thing. Similar so, to the SIG 320 type setup. Yeah, so you go, yep. okay, cool. I'll give it to B and T on that. When it comes to overall aftermarket support, hey, parts and rails and stocks and things that are available. I think because of history and service, MP5, you go, there's an endless amount of options on how you can configure these. Fair. This just has modularity in different areas. It does. Correct. And I can see it. And there's still good aftermarket support. Yeah. Right? So, okay. Yeah. That's that's almost like a wash. Uh, you know, or you can give me a point. That's fine, too. Um, cost in terms of base cost of the gun. Just the gun. Uh, I mean, mine wins because it's cheaper, right? Twenty-three fifty. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like the, they kind of vary what's brace, whatever comes on, but three bills uh, stock. Now the 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 problem, of course, is you can't actually find this for three thousand. Yeah. It's aftermarket. You know, you're talking four or five Gs once it's all said and done. But as configured, right? Let's just say hypothetically, you could buy each of these guns base price and build them out as we have them here. Now, granted, there's going to be different design choices, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I win all day then. Not really. They're almost identical. Well, I'm saying I went, sorry, maybe I lose because this costs more. As configured, As configured. The, this B&T is actually more than this MP5. Yeah. Right? Which is, I think for a lot of people, kind of a shock. Now, granted, it has a $400 more expensive optic and uh, a $500 mod light versus the stock alone is seven. Yeah, the stocks are ungodly expensive on the B&T. Six, seven. Yeah, six, they're seven. like 650 or something like that. So price, you go look at... It's tough. Like, there's no clear winner on that, you know? Okay. Then, I guess, depending on aftermarket parts you add for this, price could go up depending on the brand, whether it's nice or Midwest industry. 100%. Right? So, okay. Operating system. Uh, Roller I, delayed blowback. Yeah. Will be the smoothest thing you ever shoot. It is one of the smoothest things I've ever shot. You it's can't debate It's got a great track record of longevity, durability, reliability. However, mm -hmm. these were picked up... Let's see, started getting made in 2011, picked up by SOCOM in, what was that, 2019? 18, 19, 18, 19? Yeah. I mean, they test the shit out of stuff. Sure. So the difference is, you know, roller delayed, uh -huh. and then we got, like, a similar recoil spring plus that hydraulic buffer in here. The buffer makes it, I'm telling you, if you pick up a standard blowback 
nine mil gun, like when people watch our Scorpion video and everyone yells at us because we're complaining about the recoil. It's like, look, it's not that it's bad, well, it actually is pretty bad recoil, but it's very bad recoil because it's this archaic direct blowback on a, on a pretty shitty gun. Yeah. Um, that is sophisticated direct blowback, yeah. like honestly, yeah. because of the hydraulic buffer and all that kind of stuff. It still will not be as smooth. Yeah, that's really smoother. I'll, I'll concede that. It's just the reality. Yep, it is. Okay, so we're, you know, okay. Reliability. Okay. Man, that's a tough one, but it, I, we got to go with track record again. You got to go with track record because I will revert back to NASA that has an MP5. No, I think it's 540 or 560,000 documented rounds through it. Still going. Still going. I mean, that is insane. Now, that said, my point on reliability is always, if I was going to get in the gun debate with someone, is, well, define reliability. Yeah. How reliable do you need? Because the reality is, never had a malfunction, never had a malfunction. Correct. And I get it. Everyone likes to say that on their home-built ARs, but they're all liars, right? It's like you have a lot of malfunctions, and everyone can roast us in the comments for that. The reality is, never had a single malfunction, stovepipe failure to feed, nothing on either of these guns. Correct. So they're both reliable. Yeah. Like, I mean, it just is what it is. I guess I'd give you a point because the track record of that gun and the guys that field it, yeah. put it through its paces. And I I have yet to see, and maybe just because I haven't searched, like Google image search, like, you know, seals with B&Ts. Right? If you Google seal, you know, Navy seal B&T, there's dudes that were on deployment six months ago rocking an MP5. Yeah, because it's yeah. still in their armory. Sorry, you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. If, if you Google Navy seal mp5 yeah there's dudes that still deploy with them they're and still rocking them yeah there's photos of dudes in mogadishu with mp5 oh yeah i mean that's part of when the subgun yeah. short barrel rifle thing started to transition was, yeah. was post somalia you know yep. um okay this is kind of an interesting one manual of arms and sort of overall I controls win. of the gun i win we we all know everyone's biggest gripe and even dudes who've never shot an mp5 yeah sp5 mp5 just go with us guys are like whoa manual of arms Look, this is standard AR-ish mag release, bolt release. You can put an AR trigger in it. You can charge it, non-reciprocating. I mean... Full ambi. Full ambi, great for left side, right side shooters. Yours sucks if you're a lefty. It doesn't though, it doesn't. There's one that full uh, ambidextrous controls. The only difference is... I just mean the charging handle, you know? But it's not actually a problem. No? No. You're doing okay with it? It's absolutely myth. I mean... Like, you, you come over the top, you rack it back, mag in, and either slap it or a lot of times, honestly, I just use my fist and I just fist it and um, to totally fine. Not a big deal as a lefty at all. At it's, all. It's weird how there's innuendo with that because fisting and then also I call that a donkey punch. You call it whatever you want. We all have our Anyways. moments in life. Um, so let's see. Suppressor host. I think if Equal. we're talking sub gun. Well, why would you, I don't think I've ever shot either of these guns without a can on it. No, it's equal. Because both can tri-lug. Both tri-lug. Uh, one difference, also direct thread, not also direct thread. Correct. Now, that's different on the SOCOM, one, the, 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 the short one. Correct. Which I think has tri-lug and direct thread, Correct. I believe. Correct. That one does not. Now it's fixed. At the same time, I will never direct thread a can on a subgun that has tri-lug. Why would you? So I don't care. Correct. Like, that's ridiculous. So I'd say... Even. It's pretty equal. That's a wash. I, I, I'm going to give it to you. It's, it's yep. pretty equal on that. Um, da, 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 what do we got? How about this? Mags and then trigger. Okay, so mags. Which is important. Son of a bitch. You, well, caveat to this, because modularity. I understand. Let me finish my whole thought here. Mm -hmm. B&T OG mags are dog shit. And we can show that with proof by the fact that we have that on there. Because if you drop this half full and it hits like this without your little rubber condom on there, this mag just blows out. Might do that. Pretty often. I think most people in the comments, if they have one of these, will concede that. that. Now, look, I'm talking shit about this own platform, so you should, be, you should be like, yeah, Chris, you're right, because those mags, we could throw them off this fucking cliff right now, pick it up, and I guarantee it'd probably work. They're absolute tanks. I mean, they're like the tanks of all tanks of mags. Yeah. And if you have... Especially if you have a genuine HK MP5 SP5 mm -hmm. and you're running like KCI Max, guys, you 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 have to check yourself. Like this is ridiculous, and I refuse to to tolerate Korean magazines on your. But the 5, mags are a hundred dollars. Yes, they are. That's a three thousand dollar gun. Yes, they are. But they are bomb proof. Bomb -proof. I mean, these are 
bomb-proof mags. Worth every penny. They're $100 mags, and I throw them in the dirt, and they're getting dinged up by yep. rocks today, and I yep. frankly don't care. Now, the little caveat and maybe a little uh, chink in your armor here is because I can get a Glock lower on this, Glock mags are known to be very reliable. And that also is blasphemy for me on a sub gun. I refuse you it. You have a Glock mag? Yep. It's, I'm not even going to entertain this argument. Okay. I won't do it. I won't do it. If I'm running a Glock pistol and I want a sub gun, it, same, 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 same. I like things with their native thing they were meant to go with. Yeah, but if like. the native thing is the uh, chink in the armor, you're handicapping yourself out the gate. Look, I can't really dispute that, if we're going to be honest. <laughs> I can't really argue hey, with that. Hey, everyone heard it. I got a win right there. Yeah, but, you know, whatever. Sometimes you just got to... And if you run a 320 on concede. this, fuck you. Okay? Yeah, in all fairness, yeah, yeah I would actually agree and with And then that. trigger. Look, they are not bad. They're not. They're not. They're not. However, I can drop a Geise SD3G, SSA, SSAE, yeah. SDE, whatever the fuck else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the standard B&T tr trigger not that bad it's not that bad so it's actually good I, I think it's actually good I thought about dropping like a flat face like badass guys and I'm like why for why it's not it, it's in the, the triggers in the category of it is perfectly acceptable yeah no reason to swap that out yeah. unless you just want to go nuts with yeah. it but and that one it's not bad it's not bad it's just different yeah it's just different it's a combat trigger it just is what it is yep. you know and that fire control group is I mean again lots of wear and tear on those guns with no issues so that, I mean, the robust trigger systems, like, I don't know. It is cool that you can drop a, a trigger in this. I don't think it's really needed. No. Um, people are going to argue with us and go, no, you need to do this. Look, it's my opinion, okay? What we have here, so, everyone. We're at a little bit of an impasse. Got a little bit of a stalemate. Yeah. As they say. And that's why I said I've dreaded making this video. You see, the truth is, they're both great guns. But there's a component we haven't discussed yet. And that's which one wins on cool points. Which one wins your heart? There was a time when not only would I have chosen the B&T, but I didn't even like MP5s. And now it's become one of my favorite guns. But I'm also biased. I'm drawn to things that are classic but still have a place in our modern world. And the BNT is great. I, I have only positive things to say about it, but I don't know that it's memorable. And a hundred years from now, I believe the MP5 will still capture us. You see, there's more to shooting than just the tool and how modern and ergonomic it is. You see, there's a thing called pleasure. And much like driving an Aston Martin DB5 down the Pacific Coast Highway at dawn, it's not just about getting from point A to point B that's important. It's about the sheer enjoyment of the experience. My heart goes to the MP5.